The idea of job security is outdated as a landline. If you haven't been in a search for a while, it's probable you will at some point, by choice or not. Most executives admit to staying way too long or sense what's coming and justify staying anyway. Here, there's another reason. The faulty belief that navigating to what's next will inevitably be worse and has to suck. Screw that. Lauren Greif has spent a lifetime in corporate and executive search, calling bullshit on stale career advice that most still use. This is Career Blast in a Half, the career podcast for executives ready to cut past outdated career advice to fuel your outcomes now. So let's go. This is episode five of Career Blast in a Half. And today, what we're talking about is the brain tattoo that I want you to have permanently in your head for accessing the hidden job market. I'm going to walk you through this visual. I actually want you to take notes. And as I narrate, I want you to draw this for yourself. I want you to picture a triangle or a pyramid, whatever you want. Make six layers. What I'm going to explain to you is how the hidden job market works and where about 99.999% of all job seekers, regardless of how senior they are in their careers, where they are making the mistake. Now, on the left-hand side, draw an arrow going from the bottom to the top. On the other side, make an arrow going from the top down. On the left-hand side, where you have the arrow going from the bottom up, I want you to start filling in those layers. Here we go. At the very bottom of this pyramid, I want you to write the words internal promotions. On the next layer, put referrals. Above that, networking. On top of that, professional organizations. On top of that, recruiters. And at the very top, which should be your smallest triangle, ads or job boards, job posts. Now, on the left-hand side, where that arrow is going from the bottom to the top, I want you to write these words. Employers hire in this direction. On the right-hand side, where the arrow is going from the top down, write, I'm going in this direction. Now, we're going to narrate this, and I'm going to show you why the proportions here are so vital and where you have control to access the hidden job market and why this is so effective. First and foremost, internal promotions. I don't think I need to explain a lot here because it's pretty obvious, right? If there's an internal candidate, there's often, not always, but often a very high propensity that they're going to go ahead and hire somebody who has already invested in the organization, certainly a rock star, right? And so you want to ask that when you're interviewing, are there any internal candidates? Hell yeah, you want to know. Not because you're going to bow out, but you just want to understand so that you're not blindsided by the fact that, oops, you know, they went with the internal candidate. So you can scale your time accordingly. In the next layer above internal promotions, where you wrote in referrals, okay, I want you to make all kinds of like smiley faces and stars. That's your gold. Referrals are gold. We're going to talk specifically. I'm going to take a pause here and do like a public service announcements for referrals. And here's why. One out of 15 or one out of 16 referrals and these are good referrals, not just wah, wah, referrals. These are really good ones. One out of 15 or 16 gets hired. So write that down. One out of 15 or 16 gets hired. So your referrals, the best source of your referrals, are not just from the people you know. Goodness, start branching out to what they call second, third degree connections. Or in job speak, we call those your weak links. Your weak links are your strongest ties. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's not. And I can promise you that this works. I mean, I have the data to back it up at Stanford Studies, more recently a LinkedIn study, Malcolm Gladwell, all those good people. But what you need to know 
is if you continue to go through your people who already know you, you will be drinking a lot of dirty bath water because your candidacy is also based on a perception of what they know about you as compared to the people who are newer to your network who are without any baggage, right? They don't know how long you've been in that industry, or maybe even they do, but they are much likelier to want to help you. And that is completely counterintuitive, but I will promise you that that is where your gold is. Second, third, even fourth degree connections. So referrals. Also, this is huge. Write this down. I can't see you, but I want to make sure you're actually listening and taking notes. Your referrals not only are one out of 15 or one out of 16 who gets hired, but also the time you will spend in that candidacy process is about a third less. You're going to move a lot faster as a referral than you will if you are standing at the end of that long line on an applicant tracking system or even through a recruiter. Additionally, as a referred candidate, every hiring manager knows that there's a greater likelihood, a four to five times greater likelihood that you will stay at the company longer. So they know that as a referred candidate, you are a retention asset. You are going to stay longer because whoever referred you is probably somebody who also has a lot of equity with the company. And lastly, bringing in a referred candidate is a quarter, one quarter, 25% less than acquiring through other means. Okay. So I've given you like all these amazing reasons why referrals matter and why that is where you should be emphasizing your search. Okay. Now let's get back to the pyramid at hand. Above referrals where you wrote networking. Yeah. That's where you're going to find your referrals, right? So keep networking. And when I say networking, I'm not talking about drinking a lot of coffee. What I'm talking about is having strategic networking conversations, networking with people at your target companies, networking with people that are going to be, you know, raising their hand to help you. And what I would recommend when you do have those networking calls, please, 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 please show up with three referrals for them in advance when you are setting up that coffee and ask them to do the same. This will save you boatloads of time and going back and forth and back and forth. So show up as a giver and trust me, they will want very much to reciprocate. That's called a spontaneous trade transfer. So you want to show up with the goods to help them and they want to show up for you. So give them a heads up. Professional organizations. Let's find some like-minded people who are also in that same spirit of sharing and caring. Professional organizations, whether it be associations like American Marketing Association or even organizations like Chief or other organizations that you know people are aligned and also have shared interests in helping you develop your career path and the same goes in return. Now, after we get above those professional organizations, now we're talking about recruiters and we're talking about ads. So the amount of traction and activity in the recruiter world right now is out of control. Let's face it, there's been a lot of layoffs. So what I want you to do when you are having a relationship with a recruiter is bear in mind, you are not their only game in town. They are not responsible for your fulfillment. Sure, they will come to you with many, many open jobs. Before you go and just sign up and pull a Cirque du Soleil and try to fit yourself into that culture, that organization, please know what your values are and please know what your why is. Goodness, this is what grinds my gears. You know why? Because people just take the easy way out and they go with a recruiter and they expect, ooh, and I'm not just talking about recruiters, right? When I say recruiters, I'm also including headhunters. And why it grinds my gears is because they end up taking roles because they don't want to do the work 
and they just want to have somebody do me, do me, make it all work, make it all better, make me, grant me a job, grant me a job with all my criteria and wave your wand and make me fulfilled. But they really don't know and it's not their job to know what is going to be fulfilling to you based on your values and your criteria. I have nothing against recruiters. I have was one for many, many, many years, 10 plus, 20 plus. But the point is, is that they have a job to do. The job that they have to do is to fill the open role with the candidate that the hiring manager wants, not necessarily the best candidate, with the candidate the hiring manager wants. So there's lots of variables behind the scenes. We don't know if it's because you have purple eyes. That could be a criteria that you may not know. They may have propensity to hire somebody with a certain amount of experience, and they may override that experience if something else is a huge value and a benefit to them. So while you may be looking at a job description, please bear in mind that's not the gospel. That is not the Ten Commandments. It's just an indicator. There's a lot of other factors that are going on behind the scenes for why recruiters are only able, yes, write this down too, only able to place 16% of all the job openings. So of all job openings, you will be, if you get hired through a recruiter, you will be one of 16%, right? So there's a very small likelihood, it says, in the most recent 2019 survey of U.S. employers found that recruiters were responsible for filling only 16% of all job openings. Let's get on. That's pretty low. But what's worse, and what I want to call out, is that there's an even smaller percentage. An even smaller percentage that lives in your top triangle of your pyramid where it says job posts. Okay, this, if recruiters were grinding my gears, this is like nails on a chalkboard to me. That ability to just like hit those apply now, apply now, apply now at nauseum. I cannot tell you how many people spend hours and hours clicking away, regardless of how senior they are, because they see an open role. And that's very dangerous. Dangerous because there's no regulation around jobs that are real and jobs that are fake, which means that there could be a job opening, goodness gracious, and they could be pipelining candidates for some role down the road. Additionally, we don't even know how long that job description has been out there. It could be as old as freaking mold, and they're still using that just because it's a placeholder for so many other things. Lastly, what I want you to know about the statistics of getting through an applicant tracking system is about 1.2%. Then that will bring you to the next level, which, let's be honest, is probably a recruiter and probably a very junior recruiter who isn't fully connected with what the hiring manager wants and may not even fully understand the role to be able to suss out if you are a top candidate or not. So their job at that point is to build a pool right? A mass pool. My question to you is, why are you doing this? Why are you going the easy route when you know that applying a little bit more effort in building those strategic referrals is going to be so much more fruitful? And here's why. Regardless of where you are in your career right now, the best insurance policy that you can invest in is your network. Not the job boards, not the recruiters. And if you don't start building it now, today, you will always go back to this old behavior. And let's be honest, it's pretty stinky. And you will be a victim in that process. And you will have learned nothing. And those relationships that you want and need will become very transactional for just those periods when you need something. So build the relationships through referrals and networking, those two massive areas within your triangle, even professional organizations, those layers that we talked about, right? Those are going to be in the middle. Those that's going to be, if you're going from the bottom up, 
referrals, networking, and professional organizations, it's going to be at least 50% of that triangle. That's where you have control. And like I said, that is where the equity and the compounding interest of your relationship capital builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. Sure, it takes work. Sure, it takes effort. But seriously, if you want all that, it's not Burger King. You can't have it your way all the time and just stroll up to the drive through So I hope that you have this tattoo literally seared in your brain. I'm always available to hear back from you any questions. And I will tell you right here and now that I cannot wait to hear your comments and to understand how this is working for you. I've brought over 357 clients through this methodology. And guess what? They are winning. And they're winning faster with an incredible ROI on their time and on their compensation. Not to mention, they've learned a methodology that they can learn today and use for life. For this search, the next, the next, the next, and the next. So let me know how it's going. Please go ahead and subscribe. Rate this podcast. What did you hear today? Tell us. We want to know. So have a great rest of your day, everybody, and can't wait to see you and hear you and connect with you on the next Career Blast and a Half. Thanks a million. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining today. We appreciate your listening ears. Big time. We ask this. Use these tools, not tomorrow, right now, and share them by spreading the love. Leaving us a rating and subscribe so you don't miss the next Career Blast in a Half. Most of all, thank you for you.